Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh working as an assistant professor with Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. I welcome you all to the course that's professional communication for managers and today I will be dealing with the session 17 which is again on another important topic for a budding manager and session 17 is on public speaking. So, by the end of this session, you all will be able to understand that why public speaking is relevant for you as a manager at the organizational front as well as at the personal front. Not just this, in this session, I am going to talk about the how the public speaking evoluted. With this, I am going to talk about some of the myths which you also might be having in your mind about the public speaking and not just this, in fact, I will be talking and elaborating on to the levels of public speaking as well as mode of delivery and towards the end, I will be talking about that what are the strategies which you can follow, which you can inculcate in your daily corporate routine so that you can become a good public speaker and also I will try to establish and make you people understand that what is the relationship between public speaking as well as career growth. So now let us begin with the session. Public speaking, the biggest fear. Most of us do have this fear and the moment it is about public speaking, someone asks us to speak in front of the audience, we tend to shiver like anything. We tend to be anxious. Our stress level goes up. So how many of you think that this happens with you? If this happens with you, it is again a common phenomenon. There is nothing to worry. Yes, people do have a fear about public speaking not because they cannot speak, it is just because that somewhere they have not articulated the things, the arguments in a proper manner. And this session is all about this only. I am going to tell you that how you can overcome your public speaking fear, how you can become more somewhere when I talk about confident as well as more aware about yourself and you are going to make yourself a good public speaker. So when we talk about public speaking, yes, it is more about standing in front of the gathering or large audience and putting your points across. That is again one of the most simple way of explaining public speaking. Now when we say public speaking, it is also known as oration or oratory which is the process of communicating information to the live audience. Now, it can be again in the formal setting or the informal setting. So, be prepared with that, that you can be asked any time either in your formal setting or somewhere when you are addressing a gathering where in some informal function is going in your corporate there also you might be asked to go on for public speaking. So be prepared for both the settings. It is not only that public speaking needs to happen in a formal setting. In fact, you will be finding that when we talk about public speaking ways, somewhere or the other, you need to add some informal touch to your speaking so that you can make a better connection with you and your audiences. So now if I talk about different dimensions of public speaking in business, majorly some people talk about only two dimensions, that's external speeches and internal speeches, 
But again, there is another sub segment into this that is presentation. When I say external speeches, when you are going for public speaking to the external speeches, for whom it is meant? Any idea? Yes, majorly it is meant for the outside people. It can be your customers, it can be your stake, other stakeholders, investors, government and so on. So, for them you tend to go on for preparing external speeches wherein you want to go on for communication, communicating either some uh, idea of yours or some of the new product or some new services which your company is coming up with and you want to portray or to convey that information to the external people. Apart from that, if I talk about the another dimension of public speaking, that is more of the internal speeches. Normally, uh, in general conditions, you will be finding that internal speeches are meant for the employees, the internal people of the organization. Now, idea behind that why you want to go on for internal speeches, it can be either you want to inform them or you want to educate them, educate them or you want to motivate them about something. Now again when we talk about external speeches or internal speeches, it can take either formal mode of channel or informal mode of channel that again depends on the situation on the argument which you want to make, on the context which you want to make as well as the situation in which you are. So majorly you will be finding that internal speeches as well as external speeches they are more towards the informal way but yes it can be a formal way as well as informal way. Now the third category is about presentation. Now presentation sometimes we put it under the heading of public speaking but the difference in external speeches and internal speeches as well as presentation is when we talk in context of external and internal speeches it can be for mass gathering. You may not have the specific audience but when we talk about presentations you tend to have specific audiences. That is again another aspect which makes it differentiated from external and internal speeches. That the specificity of the audience is there, pre-planned is there. Of course, in the external and internal speeches also, you tend to plan something, you tend to plan your argument undoubtedly. But when we talk about presentation, that is more narrow that is only going to touch one particular aspect of an argument, not so many aspects. So yes, these are some of the different dimensions of public speaking which you might be coming across when you are going to join the corporate world. If you want to share some big change about your organization, you need to address your customers, media people, government and so on. Or else you feel that your employees are demotivated and you really want to instill motivation in them so that they should work hard. You are just going for an internal speech. Whereas if you want to present some of your business plan to your senior, therein you need to go for a presentation, a detailed presentation which is going to touch the different aspects of a particular argument that is your business plan. So these are the different dimensions which you will come across. Now moving forward, you need to be very very sure, you need to understand this that why as a budding manager public speaking is important for business. Yes, it is a very 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 important aspect. If and many a times you will be finding that the success of your business tends to depend that how well or how good you are at public speaking that tends to decide the success of your organization and when this public speaking is connected is directly proportional to the success 
then of course, you really need to understand that what makes it so important. So, the very first point in this regard is that public speaking, if you are having good public speaking skills, it is going to provide you with an opportunity wherein you can inform your people, you can persuade your people, you can convince your people about different things. And when I say people, it can be again publics. It can be again internal or external people. So, if you are good at public speaking, then you have that opportunity in your hand that you will be able to present your idea in such a way in the most articulated manner that it is coming to the people and that is going to help you out in convincing them, in making them believe that yes, whatever you are saying is actually correct. Also, it helps you in creating a good impression or you can say goodwill or you can say credibility about the company. Take two situations wherein one is a good public speaker, he does not fear, fear anything, he is very comfortable dealing with uh, audiences when it is live audience that person can speak so well very comfortable and take situation B wherein the person is not that much comfortable handling the audience looking into their eyes and speaking. So, when it is audience the audience is customer in situation A that person is going to establish a good credibility of their organization because that person is being depicted that he belongs to this organization. He is a representative of that organization. He is representing the organization. So, whose goodwill is going to be increased? If you are a good public speaker, your organizations. So, again that is another very very important aspect for a business that yes you need to be a good public speaker because in that way you are going to add goodwill credibility to your organization because people tend to associate you with your organization they see a reflection of your organization in you not just this in fact when we talk about public speaking through your public speaking skills you can spark the innovation, the creativity in your monotonous kind of routine. In the monotonous tasks as well as in the monotonous way of doing things, you can instill that confidence in the other people just by your public speaking skills. You might have noticed that there are some organizations who are continuously moving ahead with innovation, creativity, whereas some organizations they are stuck. Yes, you will be finding that there is a difference in the leader, the leader who is having good public speaking skills, that person is able to transfer his thoughts, transfer his innovation capabilities in the people. And similarly with this, you are able to motivate your workforce if you are good at public speaking because people start trusting you, people start believing in you that yes, whatever you are saying is for their benefit, for the benefit of the organization as a whole and this, the moment they start trusting you through your public speaking skills, again that is a very important aspect that becomes a very important aspect for a manager to be a good public speaker. In this regard, I just also I also want to raise a point that through your good public speaking skills you can attract right customers. Yes, people who want to be associated with you, people who see congruency with you because you are representing the organization. So, in that case you can attract right customers as well towards your organization because again people see a reflection of the organization in you. Not just this. If we talk about why it is important for the business, it helps in creating credibility as I already discussed with you about goodwill and all. Not just this, it is also going to provide career advancement opportunity because people see potential in you. They see that yes, you are a person in the organization who is able to convince the public, who is able to persuade the public 
through speaking skills. So, of course, you are going to grow in your career. So, with this, uh, if for example, you are a salesperson, you belong to the sales department, marketing department, it is going to impede the sales cycle. Not only for a particular department, for the whole organization. See, public speaking skills can do wonders to the organizational growth. Last but not the least one, it enhances communication at various level. Now, whether uh, you are talking about interacting with the external people or the internal people, if you are a good public speaker, if you have good speaking skills, you will be able to put your points across. And the moment you are able to put your point across, it is going to enhance communication at different levels of management in the organization as well as with the external people. So I hope now you are able to understand that why as a manager, you need to have public speaking skills because the organization growth is again very closely linked with your public speaking skills. Now I am going to focus upon that why public speaking is important at your personal level or personal front. That was more about that what organizational benefits are associated with your, pers uh, with your public speaking skills. But now I am going to focus on your personal growth, your personal benefit. The more you are good at public speaking, you are going to be having more good and improved interpersonal skills. Are you getting this point? How? How you are going to have good interpersonal skills just by public speaking skills? Because when we talk about interpersonal skills, what are they? What are those? The way you express yourself. And if you are comfortable in expressing yourself to the other people around you, that is going to enhance your interpersonal skills. Remember that Johari window which we discussed in the interpersonal communication session? Now in that session I said that somewhere or the other we need to enhance the open arena part. So how that open arena part is going to be increased? If you are going to have good speaking skills and if you are able to put your points across to the other people and if they are able to take that point in the similar manner, you are increasing the open arena space. With this, it also enhances one's self-confidence, self-confidence because if you are comfortable putting your points across, you are more confident because you feel that yes, you have that capability to put your points. Now the person who is not able to put his or her points, that person is always stressed, not confident, feel nervous that how to put my points, how to recollect and organize my thoughts. But if you are able to do that, you are a more confident person. Your personality is again more confident. Not just this, in fact, when we talk about a good public speaker, who is a good public speaker? Any idea? When we talk in context of emotions, a person who has full control over his emotions. That person knows that at what time I should come up with what level of which emotion. That emotional stability is again an important aspect when it comes to public speaking. You know how to balance your emotions. You know at what level, with what affection, what point needs to come across. That is what is again that you are more self-aware about yourself. So that also leads to self-awareness because you are able to understand your emotions, you are able to handle your emotions, you are able to manage and control your emotions on your own. There is no outside remote control for your emotions, right? Not just this, when we talk about public speaking, you people might have noticed good public speakers also inculcates as well as nurture positive body language. Just notice their body language, what kind of body language they are having. Good public speakers, they are never going to have shrugged shoulders, very uh, closed body signals. No, not like this. They are going to be open. Why? Because they are open to the ideas. So, as a good public speaker, you can develop 
positive body language and also when we talk about on the personal front it as I already explained this particular point that is less stress and uh, last but not the least one when we talk in terms of career advancement yes you will be getting more opportunities now I think I need not to elaborate on this because of course when you are put putting your points across you are able to inform people easily you are able to persuade people convince people of course you will be moving high in your success ladder and you will be getting the possibility of meeting new people because you are going to be grabbing their attention and the moment you have that capability of grabbing the attention yes you are into the possibility where new people wants to meet you so yes these are some of the points which I think is going to convince you that why as a manager you need to have good public speaking skills moving forward I just want to elaborate that yes public speaking is uh, termed as an act or it is a process or when we say that it is an art of speaking putting your points across but remember one thing public speaking is not only about providing information to the people no sometimes people tend to believe that a good public speaker is a person who is just informing no it's not that public speaking is more than that talking is not enough that's what I'm trying to put my point across that if you're just sharing the information that is not enough in fact you should know through your public speaking skills that how to influence the other person that is what is more important and that makes public speaking even more important again I'll repeat this point that public speaking is not just the act of talking it is more of that the act of influencing others through your talking you are able to understand them you are able to uh, somewhere influence the actions feelings emotions of the other person as per yours so that is what is actual public speaking is now moving towards the somewhat evolution part that uh, from where this public speaking rules and all such things came into existence so uh, the very first point I am just going to focus upon which was the three different parts of pers persuasion which were by given by great Aristotle now if we talk about the art of public speaking it is actually not new uh, if we talk about way back 490 to 322 BC right it was the Greek people who came up with this public speaking art yes later on uh, with the absention of uh, uh, when we say that uh, somewhere those Greek people were more involved into that and it was great Aristotle who came up with the three basic rules of persuasion all these three rules were talking about ethos logos and pathos now what we mean by ethos ethos is basically establishing the credibility logos is more about logical sequence and pathos is more about connecting emotionally now see great Aristotle he said this that initially when we go on for public speaking skills the very first stage or the very first rule talks about that as a speaker you should be able to develop and establish your credibility in the mind of the audience that is just the basic thing which you should start with and then when we talk about the logos that is more about which says that the other rule which is again the most important one is you should come up with some kind of logical sequence of whatever argument you are trying to put it should not be haphazard it needs to come up like a flow it should have some kind of logical sequence because people 
tend to take up those things only which are sequential in nature, which has some relation, which has some logic behind. So, if that logic is missing in your argument as a public speaker, you might be losing your audience. The third rule which he said again is another important rule that is about pathos that is connecting emotionally. He said that somewhere many a times what happens that you are able to establish your credibility out of different things that you belong to some company which is credible or people see are seeing you as a credible source and at the same time whatever seek argument you are giving that is also having logical sequence. But the emotional connect between you and the audience is missing. Now how you can develop that emotional connect? Emotional connect can be developed through appropriate body language, through appropriate non-verbal clues, through proper eye contact, through proper para language. All such are just different ways by which you can go on for establishing an emotional connect with your people, with your audience. So this was just uh, from the uh, you can say great Aristotle who focused upon having the three different basic rules of persuasion when you go for pu public speaking. Then after this I am going to focus upon Cesarso's five canons of rhetoric. Now uh, if I talk about the Greek Aristotle, yes. Greeks were the initial people who were talking more about the public speaking, but after the ascension of uh, Rome, somewhere it, the public speaking techniques, they were copied, they were modified by the Romans for their use. And again, it was Marcus Tullius Cicero who explained five canons of rhetoric, wherein he said that yes, there are five basic things which as a public speaker, you need to focus upon if you want to inculcate or take up public speaking habit. The very first in this regard is invention. Invention is more about thinking innovatively about your argument. That is what is about invention talks about. That when you are going for public speaking, make sure that you are coming up with some new idea, some new argument. Because if it is going to be a repetitive one, sorry, people are not going to listen to you. They are not going to pay attention to you. So think about, think innovatively about the argument which you want to put across. And once you have done this, then it is more about arrangement that is gathering information, right? That is about gathering information about that particular argument that what information you want to convey. Now once you have decided that yes, this is going to be the whole information or uh, these are the different sources from which I have collected raw data or information in bulk, then talks about style. Style is more about looking for appropriate words, looking for appropriate words or sentences which you can quote for making your information to be interpreted in the more influential manner. That is what is style. That what words, what sen which sentences you will be going for which is going to make your information more impactful, which is going to create a good impact on your audiences. Then the last thing is about memorizing. Memorizing is more about uh, recalling or learning kind of thing wherein you will be thinking about learning the argument, the information, the words which you have framed. Last is about delivery. Now delivery is about basically looking for your para language, 
your body language, your tone, your voice, your volume, your modulation, your facial expressions, everything. That how are you going to deliver that argument which you have decided upon. That is what is about the delivery aspect. Many a times what happens is that people tend to have very creative argument with very good words which are coming which can be taken by the people. But the way they are delivering it, that delivery is not good. Not good in terms of either their body language is not good or their expressions are not good, their volume, voice, tone is monotonous. So all such things tends to make the difference and that's why the surgeon called it as five canons of rhetoric and if you want to develop good public speaking skills you need to focus upon all these five points. Moving forward this is what is about somewhere modern elements you can say or modern ways wherein we talk about public speaking. The very first thing is who. You need to understand that in an organization who is going to handle or who is going to go for public speaking. Then comes what that person is going to speak about that means the argument and to whom that is about audience. Then it is about channel or medium which you need to take care that which channel which medium you are going to go for because uh, when we talk in modern context we have n number of channels. We, you do have different technological channels uh, different technology due to which different channels are coming across which you can adopt. Now you need to think that which channel is more suitable for you and the uh, last thing which you need to think about is impact. What impact is it is going to leave the argument is going to leave on my audiences that is also you need to think. You just want to create an impact that they should become more informational your audience should become more informational or your audience should be convinced or your audience should take some action that impact you need to plan yourself you should plan. It should not be an after activity, okay, I will go for the public speaking, let us see what happens, what impact is going to be created. No, it is you only as a public speaker who needs to take care of this impact, then only it is going to be good one. And then yes, after that you can have either your self feedback or feedback from your team who are going to tell you that whether it was able to create impact, whether it was good and then again you can go on for the cycle in your organization. I hope this is coming to you that what are the different elements. So now moving forward I am going to talk about some myths. Might be possible you are also having this myth in your mind. So I am just here to clarify this thing. Most of the people believe that public speaking skills are inborn. Are you also fall in the same category? So my argument to this is that public speaking skills are not inborn. I will tell you why I am saying this. Yes, there are cases that when you are small, you from that time only you do not fear facing audience, that is completely okay. But if we say that public speaking skills are only inborn, that is actually wrong. It is not that. You as a person, anyone around the world can learn public speaking skills. You just need to understand those ways, the somewhere the different dimensions, the intricacies that how and why and what you need to do. For sure I am guaranteeing you that you can also become a good public speaker. If you are going to focus on the strategies which I will be focusing upon towards the end and not just this, if you are going to be with the Aristotle's uh, three rules, Cesar Sol's five canons, they are also telling you that yes you can become a good public speaker. It is not only innate that you are born with, this, with that skill. No, 
Another myth about public speaking which is very very common is that fear of public speaking is not desirable. But yes, it is desirable. See, who is a fearful person? Who has practiced? Who has prepared something? A person who has not done any preparation, why that person is going to be fearful? So, before public speaking, before making your public speech, if you are nervous, if you are not confident, if you are having little bit of anxiousness, it's okay, it's okay. It is just you need to know how to overcome that fear, that's it. But that does not mean that fear of public speaking is not desirable. If a person is having some fear before public speaking, he cannot become a good public speaker, no. A person who has done some preparation, that person is only going to have some fear. Otherwise, why people are going to have fear? Not at all. They will be just happy moving here and there and having a gala time. So, two things that yes, public speaking skills are not only inborn, you can inculcate, definitely you can inculcate and also fear of public speaking is not desirable, rather it is desirable, it is desirable. Now, moving further. I will be talking about different levels of public speaking. Yes, we do public speaking at different levels. Certain times we are at just the level of speaking to inform. Wherein my focus is that I am going for this public speaking because I want to inform my people, to educate my people about something, about educate my audience about something, about some concept, about some issue whatsoever. So, my point here for public speaking or either you can say my aim for public speaking is just to inform something to my audiences. I do not want that they should go with me, nothing. I just want to tell them about some information that is it. So, that is my level of public speaking that I am just speaking to inform. The second level is about speaking to persuade, to convince, wherein I want to either change or develop some mindset of the audience. I am just trying to make them think from other perspective or trying to persuade or convince what I believe is actually correct. So, this is just I am in the level of persuasion. With information, I am also trying to convince them that see, this is another way of thinking this argument or this issue and you can also think in this manner. So, this is more about convincing or changing their point of view or developing a new mindset that is what is my purpose. My level of public speaking is that I am speaking only to persuade. Now, moving on to the other level that is speaking to actuate. Now, what is actuate? That you are making people to perform some action. That is again you can say that pinnacle of persuasion, wherein you are able to change their mindset and at the same time they are going with you. Now, when we say speaking to persuade, you need to have more of facts and figures to be quoted, right, wherein you can give valid justification, rationalization is again you need to be rational, fine. Whereas, if I talk about speaking to actuate, somewhere or the other what you are doing with persuasion, you are making people to act like you, to perform that action. That is why I said that it is pinnacle of persuasion. Now, when we say in the speaking to actuate, now here the speaker might be might be using facts and figures i am not disagreeing to it he or she is going to use some facts and figures but with that he needs to connect 
people emotionally that is very important aspect of speaking for speaking to actuate you should be able to come up with that emotional connect that people are going as per your wish and they are actually taking up that action now many a times we do say that here charismatic personality of the speaker also plays a very important role charisma right so this is how you are having different levels of public speaking now another level is speaking to entertain now here you are not having any focus on the point it can be again uh, for example uh, some of your senior manager is uh, just getting retired and you are asked to say a few words about him right so you are just going on for entertainment and yes there in when we say entertainment two aspects are there either you will be adding humor or you will be going for emotional aspects but again that emotional aspect is not for any kind of action that is just you wanted to create an emotional aspect you wanted to entertain people you wanted to connect with the people that's why you are doing it now uh, make sure when you are going for speaking to entertain and you are going for creating humor you need to be sensible enough whatever you think that people are not going to take it in the wrong manner that only you should quote fine right? so this was about levels of public speaking now moving forward i am going to talk about that what are the characteristics of good public speaking yes your speech should be clear the clarity needs to be there and not just this in fact as i started uh, my session i quoted this that it is somewhere in the formal setting or the informal setting but more appropriately you will be finding that a good public speaker tends to have more of the informal tactics because it is more about getting connected with the people so informal tactics again are more appropriate or are more used by the speakers in order to get emotionally connect with the audiences apart from this your speech should be concise see however how much good you as a speaker is but again the audience they have some limit of listening they cannot go on listening you for 5 4 6 8 hours no so make sure that whatever you want to put across that should be in the concise manner unnecessarily beating around the bush is not required you should avoid yourself from that right uh, whatever points you are coming up with it should be vivid it should be concrete at the same time with vividness you need to focus on having concreteness of the message also if i talk about yes audience oriented message needs to be there it should not be as a speaker you are just focusing on yourself you need to plan your message plan your speech as per the audience the moment it is going to be there you are going to become a good speaker public speaker be courteous uh yes you should be you should be you should keep on thanking sorry show re respect to your audiences show your gratitude towards them that is again one tactic by which you can create an emotional connect between you and your audiences and yes if required if you want then you can go on for coming up with some humor thing but again be very very sure that people should not be sensitive to your humor so yes these are some of the characteristics which again makes you a good public speaker now i am going to focus upon the different modes of delivery during the public speaking that how you deliver so one way is impromptu now what's that it is like normally you will be generally you will be finding that uh, such style you tend to use in the ceremonial activities and that this is a style wherein you are not prepared you are not prepared 
you were having no idea that you will be asked to speak in the public. Yes, no, uh, in general conditions for uh, short messages. We go on for impromptu kind of mode of delivery, wherein the message is short and you will be asked spontaneously. So, when it is spontaneous, yes, many a times you might end up goofing it up, but uh, if, if you are going to strategically think, then you can be a good speaker when it is impromptu as well. The moment you are being asked, take a pause, just recollect your thoughts, your ideas because remember that impromptu way of delivery is majorly done for sharing some short messages. You need not to go on for elaborating something. So make sure that your message should be short only. If unnecessary you are going to elaborate it, then it is going to be adding a negative point to you only. So just recollect your thoughts quickly. Thank the person who has provided you with the opportunity to speak, say those few lines and then thank the audience again. Yes, again uh, it, is an, it is a spontaneous one but yes you can go on for recollecting your thoughts for a little while. Next is extemporaneous, now when we say extemporaneous, uh, yes you are well aware. prepared with your thought. You are well aware, prepared with your thought. You might be using some notes that is the bullet point during your public speaking. Yes, this is one of the best way of uh, going for public speeches. But again, if you need to move some from one place to other, then again carrying notes becomes again a problematic thing. But uh, if I talk about extra extemporaneous way of delivery, then it is good because you have certain bullet points in your hand and you just you can have a look so that you cannot miss any of the point. And yet uh, this way of delivery you need to practice a lot. You should know that uh, which point, which uh, bullet should come after what and that is how your way of delivery should be. Another one is memorized. Now memorized is that you have wrote it or recited one. You have learned it by heart. You have just mugged up the whole speech of yours. See, that is good, good in terms that okay, if you are having that sharp memory, you are able to mug it up, mug all the things up, you are able to wrote it up, so it is good. But one biggest drawback with this memorized one is that many a times people just focus upon learning the speech, not the way that how they need to speak that they forget. So, they end up coming up with the monotonous way of delivery which is wrong. So, if you are memorizing that speech it is ok. If you think that you have that much brain capacity that you are a good learner, quick learner you can do that it is ok. But make sure that it should not look like as if you are reciting some poem. It should be a conversation, right? That is what you need to focus upon that what and how you are going to make it. Next in line is manuscript. Now manuscript is you are carrying the whole page with you of your speech and you are reading word by word. Now see, uh, during your speech, if if you want to quote some legal uh, facts, legal figures wherein you cannot miss any of the wording of that sentence, for that case it is good using manuscript. But for the whole speech, uh, because what happens is that when you have a paper in your hand, you end up reading it everything 
and again in this also you tend to forget about the tone, volume, pitch. Again if you are prepared with that then manuscript is good, but if you are just going to read it and you have not practiced. So, you will be just looking into your manuscript, you will be not able to make the eye contact and the moment eye contact is being missed, people are not going to listen. So, again you need to work upon, see all these ways are somewhere good or uh, have certain negatives, but you need to be sure that how to if you are using any of the way of delivery, how you can make it for your benefit, how you can make it for your that you are using it, so it should be useful for you. Now moving forward, I am just going to tell you about some of the strategies for becoming effective public speaker. So yes, do not memorize, memorize in term of learning word to word because what happens, you might end up having connection with the audience because you are involved in memorizing what you want to speak after this. So that is what use natural language, do not use sophisticated words, technical words, jargons, no. Try to establish a connect with the people. Now how you can do this? With proper eye contact, you can always make a good connect. Practice, 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 whether it is manuscript or it is um, anything, it is memorized manuscript, practice it. Do not think that oh I am going to take the whole, the whole long paper with me, why I should practice? No. If you want to have good connect with the people, you should practice, so that you are not fumbling when you are speaking there. Draft your message in advance, uh, so that you can, should be clear with the idea of the message. Start with some professional that simply means that if you are not a good public speaker, listen good people, listen them, understand them that what is their way of delivery and the moment you will be able to look for such kind of things, trust me you will be developing public speaking skills in yourself as well. Focusing on the facts, yes last uh, in this category uh, you can go for having some breathing exercises. The moment your name is being called and you want to go on the stage to address your audience, take a deep breath that again tends to help you out. If you want to have a glass of water, go for that also. There is no problem in this. So uh, dear learners, I hope you are able to understand that how you can become good public speakers. With that, I just want to give you a formula for the smart, that smart public speaking. Select your argument properly, map out a framework that how or logical sequence, right? what is going to be your logical sequence. Then if you want add humor, emotions, revise your speech again and again, R stands for revise, so practice a lot. Try to involve audience as well as try to join the loose ends if you have some. So this is what is the smart principle talks about, right? So. Um, Yes, I also want to focus upon leadership relationship with the public speaking. You might have seen that great leaders, how they are able to influence their people, how they are able to connect with their followers, how they are able to bring and make people do as they want. The only way out is public speaking. Because through good public speaking skills, they are able to develop that emotional connect with their people, which is missing on the, in the non-leader people. So that emotional connect, the moment it is there, yes, you are a good leader and as a good leader, trust me, you need to have good public speaking skills. So develop those skills. Also how career growth is related to public speaking. Yes, during your job interviews, now very soon you are going to enter the corporate world and you are going to face the interviewers in the interview room and if there you are not speaking properly, you are not able to put your points across, then you will not be selected. So that is why again and again I am telling you that as a manager, 
if you want to succeed, if you want to su get success in the, the interview room, you need to have good public speaking skills. Many a times what happens, people tend to shiver, they do not put, they do not, uh, put their points. So how the interviewer is going to know that what capabilities, what competencies you are having. So for that, make sure that you are able to have public speaking skills because that is very much interconnected with your career advancement. Also, as I said that public speaking leads to critical thinking. How? Now see, if you are a public speaker and you know that you need to address audience, what you will be doing? You will be preparing your argument in the most critical manner because you know that there are going to be several people sitting in the audience who want some clarification. Now this thing is going to help you in adding more critical skills to you because now what, you, what will happen? You will try to critically analyze your speech and ultimately somewhere or the other just because you are a public speaker, you tend to speak. It is going to help you in adding more to the critical skills basket and again it, if you are having more of the critical skills that is going to help you in your career advancement, right? Also with this it is more about personal development, not just this with this uh, with good um, public speaking skills you end up having good social network, social connections and again having good networks, social connections, it is going to help you in your career growth only. Also, it will be helping you in developing persuasive ability, you know how to develop the connection, how to convince people and so on. Also, not again, um, quite an important thing, if you are a good public speaker, gradually you will notice that your vocabulary is getting strong, fluency is coming in your speech, which is again, a very important aspect for creating good impression on the audiences. Last but not the least one, it is more about having and creating leadership quality as well as assertiveness. So see, when we talk about public speaking, it is very much connected with your career growth, career advancement. So if you really want to advance in your career, grow in your career, you need to inculcate, you need to nurture public speaking skills in you and trust me if you are able to follow all the strategies which I just discussed in this session you will be able to become a good public speaker and so dear learners I hope you are able to understand the whole session wherein I discussed about the public speaking its uh, evolution different myths which are there the levels of public speaking as well as the mode of delivery and also you got the different strategies which are important for making you, establishing you as a good public speaker and you are able to develop the connection that how your career growth is associated with good public speaking skills. So I hope dear learners you enjoyed this session. And yes, this session is going to make you more good public speaker. So thank you and happy learning.